Hello? Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, so good morning. <laughs> I put it there so I don't forget to say good morning. Um, so today, uh, I wanted to talk about some of the, some of the things you're looking at uh, on the screen. And, and these things are kind of cool. Uh, they're all made uh, with code. Uh, I'm not going to go into what it takes to make one of those, because that's a lot of work and a lot of hours. But uh, I figured I would talk a little bit about what the basics are, like the one-on-one of all this uh, uh, crazy uh, visuals made with code. So my talk is called uh, Painting with Code. Uh, my name is uh, Paul Jeremias. I work uh, so during the day, I work at Pixar. Uh, at, at night, uh, I'm at home uh, with uh, another friend. We're making a website called shiruto.com. And this talk is kind of um, a little bit of both, um, which um, kind of like what I've, what I've learned over the, over the last three years of maintaining this website, which is a community where people can uh, upload their uh, procedural graphics and get feedback from other people in the community and, uh, um, and hopefully improve uh, of each other's knowledge and build something better together. And so, oh, and this is all my social life here, so I exist in the internet too. Uh, so I figured I would start with something very simple. Uh, this, is, uh, this is also generated with math and code, uh, very simple to the, uh, to the graphics, and I want to specifically focus on this point here. Um, and we're going to talk about this for a really long time. So this is, uh, this is a dot, OK? And if you look close, you, um, I painted the, the, the pixels. And if we zoom in a little bit more, we actually have the, the pixels, right? Um, and so this is kind of cool and simple, right? Like, if you have to program this, uh, you would probably do something like, you know, function of position equals whatever the skin color this is, I don't know. So it would be something like this. Uh, based on the x and y position, you would output some, some color. And this is actually quite awesome uh, because the GPUs already do uh, do that for us. Um, who, who knows here about uh, like shaders, for example? Does anybody know? Okay. Okay. So, well, I don't know how I'm going to explain shaders in one minute. Uh, so, um, so the GPUs allow you to program uh, the way uh, they're going to render uh, a triangle, for example. So you can send a triangle over to the GPU and say, hey, you're going to paint this thing, and then for every pixel in that triangle, it's going to run a piece of code. And that piece of code is this f of x of y, of x and y, and you can output a color. It's as simple as this, and they're called uh, fragment shaders. This is just a small part of the pipeline in the GPU uh, pipeline. Um, as the previous speaker was saying, there's multiple stages. You can use vert you can transform vertices, you can tessellate them, you can uh, have a geometry shader attached to it as well. Like, you can do many things. I'm just going to talk about fragment shaders because with that, it's enough already to make, uh, to make, a, to make a visual. Because if you have a quad and you just have a function that runs at every single pixel, that, that's more than enough unless you want to do some, some like, weird deformation on the geometry. But I'm just going to talk about uh, a quad and a shader right now. So this is what it would look like. As I was saying, it's super simple. It's just like um, you have a function, and for every pixel, it doesn't matter which pixel, because that's just like a 4x4 four four grid. Well, it's bigger than 4x4, four four, but whatever. And, and we output the color. Like I actually use the, the color picker in Photoshop to get that color. So. <laughs> um, so that would run for every pixel, and you would get that image. So success. This was really easy. Now. If you had um, the other side of the picture where there is uh, a change of color, um, what do you do? And luckily, we, we have uh, uh, textual coordinates, which uh, are really useful, because otherwise we don't know where the hell we're rendering. Um, but using textual coordinates, we can figure out what pixel we are actually rendering. So. This is extremely inefficient, and you never want to do that. But you could do, you know, if I am the pixel 0, 
then I'm going to put white. If I'm the pixel 1, I'm going to put white with a little bit of yellow. If I'm the pixel 24, and so on. You should never do that in your life. Uh, because we have math. And, and with math, we can do really awesome things. And we're going to cover that. This is going to be pretty much the core of the presentation. Um, great. Ah, the internet. The magic of the internet. Oh, yes. OK, so, so this is a color gradient. This is kind of what we were looking at before. It's it just in red instead of using white and, uh, and whatever the skin color was. Um, and this is really simple. Uh, we can take a look, actually, at the code. Uh, and the code is, you would expect, um, this is the color right here. And basically, for the color, we are, uh, we're basically saying, hey, the amount of red is going to be dependent on the texture coordinates. So that's why you're getting a black that goes towards red, because that's one in texture coordinates. That's zero. Really simple. Let's get something more interesting. We can mix colors. And the GPU or uh, fragment shaders allow you to do that with a function called mix. And, and the function works very simple way. You say two colors, and you say how they interpolate. In this case, this is changing from 0 to 1 over this axis. So when it's 0, it's grabbing the first color, which is red, here, this one. And then up there, because it's 1, it's grabbing the second color. And I'm not even going to demo that, because that's really simple. But this is cool. This is, uh, this is getting more interesting, and you will see. This is extremely used for, for drawing, even 2D or 3D, uh, because it allows you to create changes in, in the color. Um, and it allows you to create um, a step, which is really useful, and you'll see right now. For example, if you go back to the previous example, and I just write here, do you guys see the text? Should I make it bigger? OK, I'm making it bigger either way. So you just use step. And I say, hey, everything that is bigger than 0 0.5, uh, be red. Everything that is uh, smaller than 0 0.5 is black. Now, you can start imagining, like, I could draw a line, for example, right? If I put two steps, one on each side, I suddenly have a vertical line. Uh, let's go forward one more. Um, this is the evolution of the step, which is you kind of never wanted to do this uh, sort of um, uh, abrupt uh, change because that creates aliasing and stuff like that if you start like rotating that line. So smooth step is the, is the cool version of the step. You can see. Let's do a smooth step, like something like this. And I don't know if you notice the difference, but I'm going to make it more softer. But you can create softer gradients of color. And this is cool, because if you're going back to the example of the line, suddenly you have a line that is smooth. And a lot of people would appreciate lines that are smooth. Or, or like fonts that are smooth. I don't know why they come up black, but uh, this is another function that will be used in in just a second. Uh, but uh, mod it gives you the remainder and it allows you to repeat uh, domains, and so that sounds really fancy, but but. But the, the reality is, like, for example, if I grab this, like, basically, it will allow me to do, like, 10 times what you are looking at. Kind of this would be the intuition. So if I multiply by 10, and I say by 1, you get 10 times the same thing. So now I'm going to take a look at something. This. This is something you learn back in the day in high school. This thing is extremely useful. If you want to do 
animation, if you want to do any sort of thing that moves, if you want to do modeling as well, because it allows you to uh, create really simply movement, for example. Like, let's go back to the previous example, something like that. So now if I just add, for example, the sign of, and I'm just going to use time now. So sorry, I did not explain that I have time, but yes, there's time. And now if I play, so now you can create animation. So you can create lines that move or like uh, gradients of color that move. You can also use it. Yeah, it's moving. Um, for, for many, many things. It's really powerful, and you will see in a second as well uh, how can it uh, be used. So, oh god, here we go. Uh, this is another function. Um, and this is the power to power of six, but it, power to power of whatever, it's really, really, really awesome because it allows you to refine the way uh, things behave, like in animation as well, like if you want uh, uh, to change how, how things uh, feel, it's, it's, um, there's a big difference. Um, if, if like, I'm just going to show it uh, right here. If I just output, this is the, the initial example that I put. Uh, this is just outputting the, the X coordinates pretty much mapped into the red channel. But it, if I show this at a power of two, suddenly it starts changing this gradient. And it starts getting a little bit more compressed on towards the right. And this is because this function that is here, it's getting um, more uh, vertical, I guess, in, in English. Um, so, so yeah, this is at a power of six, for example. So really useful function as well. And I figured as well I would uh, put this out uh, in case anybody wanted to take a look. But this is uh, the same idea. Um, it's a little uh, shader I wrote, so you can draw your own functions. And like, for example, this is x. or And, and then you can kind of like prototype your own ideas. But um, I mean, this should look familiar to all of you who are in, uh, in graphics, like a triangle. And you can make it even fancier, like if you like like clamp it to like 0 0.1. And like, so now you can use this signal to, to draw something else. And so anyway, this is a uh, framework. Uh, feel free to, uh, to use it. So going back to this monster, I'm going to go back to some uh, more uh, math from uh, high school. Uh, so, so far, whatever, everything we've seen, it goes pretty much from 0 to 1, from 0 to, to 1, and from 0 to 1. It's mapping pretty much uh, textual coordinates, the textual coordinate space to the space that I'm using uh, my math in. But I could, also use, I could also use other spaces. I could use polar coordinates. Like, if you remember, polar coordinates allows you to uh, uh, basically move to a space where uh, everything is about an angle and uh, uh, radius. And this is really useful because you can start drawing functions um, that could be useful for uh, drawing your visuals that are not so rectilinear. They have like crazy shapes like that. And then, as we will see in a second, you can also um, do and create cooler things. Like if you just want four lobes or, uh, or 10 or whatever, like it's really um, simple to use. So you can make them like bigger or something. It's really simple. And calculating the space is as defined below. Uh, but again, this should be in your math book somewhere. Yes. All right. So let's go. Um, so now we're going to uh, grab everything that I uh, talked about, and we're going to create something. Um, and I hope I'm going to make the other letter bigger so you can see. And I hope you like it. So here we go. Do you guys see at the end? Oh, come on, say yes. yes. OK, good. <laughs> awesome. Um, 
So yeah, I'm going to use uh, this tool uh, just because I'm a little biased and um, <laughs> me and my friend made it. But uh, you can use any tool out there. You can also just draw a quad at home and, <laughs> and, and put a shader on it. So there's nothing uh, fancy about it. Um, but uh, so I started with a code <laughs> already. Basically, it outputs black, but it can output white as well. So this is good. It means like things are working. Uh, so going back to what I was just saying about polars, like what if we um, convert um, to uh, polar coordinates this UV space? Actually, why not? I'm just going to show that it is a UV space. Uh, so, so it goes from black on the left to red, uh, which means the green, uh, sorry, which means the red channel is um, going uh, from zero to one, and, it mean, and 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 the vertical axis is also working correctly. So we're we're good. We should be good to go. Now, so let's do the polar conversion. Uh, so the polar conversion works like this. And we can take a look that this is actually working. If Let me just give a second to calculate that. Here we go. So now let's take a look at uh, radius. Uh, so this is what you would expect. It goes from 0 on the bottom left to 1 on the upper uh, right side. And this is cool. But um, if we want to draw something, maybe we should put this circle uh, in the middle, um, just so uh, it will be easier to talk about it. Let's just move it uh, 0 0.5 towards the center. So now we have, now we have a cool kind of a circle in the middle of the screen, uh, but it's deformed. I don't know if you guys see it, but it's stretched uh, from the sides. This is because uh, there is more x's than y's. So we should scale that, and we can do that uh, very uh, easily. This is the resolution of the, uh, the, resolution of the screen. So I'm just uh, basically balancing that. There we go. So. We have uh, a black spot in the middle. It goes towards the side. So it's really easy to draw a circle now, right? We can use the step function that I was talking about, or the smooth step function, if we wanted to, to draw a circle. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, but I would like to invert, actually, this radius, just so um, I'm going to draw it so you guys can see it. So if we invert it, we can uh, suddenly see the the circle. Uh, well, sorry, <laughs> we can suddenly see like the the shape of the circle is getting it's getting closer. Now, um, let's say I'm gonna draw a flower. So I'm gonna say, hey, the flower is gonna be a smooth step of I don't know, like zero point. Actually, one second. Let me just do flower equals I don't know zero point nine. This is gonna be the size of the flower that I'm gonna draw. And then we can just say, hey, the flower is going to be a smooth step of the size of the flower, which is 0 0.9, to uh, basically right now I'm defining uh, how big is this interpola uh, is interpolation between the, the, the black and the white, the border of the flower, basically. And I don't know, something like that. And then I'm going to use the, the radius as a factor to interpolate. Um, so you cannot see anything. This is great. But, but now you do see. Um, so we have a circle. This is great. Now, because we're using polar coordinates, we can do what we were just looking at before. And we can just do, let's do maybe uh, five petals or something. OK. Yeah, this is really ugly. So now let's make it a little bit prettier. Uh, Something like that, maybe. Mm, maybe that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to make something that looks good. Ah, here we go. Um, and you can also use other, so this is was using the angle, and like in polar coordinates, the angle basically uh, moves around like this. So that's why when you apply a sign on it, it will start like undulating around the edges. Now, what you could do is also you can use the distance to the center to uh, modify how this thing uh, uh, is um, shaping. So if you use the radius, I mean, you can barely see it, but let's see if we do that. So you can start seeing this becomes this like, uh, 
I don't know the name actually. This is like the ninja whatever thing. I don't know that. That. Um, yeah, and and you can even animate uh, if you use time uh, and you play. Yeah, it moves. So this is good because now we can start painting this thing. Um, so what you could do is uh, let's make a background first. Uh, something uh, that goes maybe from some yellow tone to a red tone. Ah. And I'm going to use the vertical uh, gradient. So now we have a uh, background, but we lost a flower. So we need to add the flower back. And if you, like, for those of you who are into graphics, this is the painter algorithm, but uh, made by hand. So then you have to basically mix what it was before <laughs> with your new color, which uh, is going to be, should we make it red? Yeah, OK. Perfect. So here we go. This is now going to be the flower, hopefully. Yeah. So now we have a red flower in a, I don't know, sunset or something. Uh, some color in the background. Um, and a flower needs a little bit more love. And it's usually like some like root to, to be hold or something, right? So let's create, uh, let's draw a line the, the same way that that we were talking about before. So I don't know the name, but I'm going to call it root. Um, but the root of it is going to be, and you have to bear with me for a second, and a color It's going to be that. Oops. Oh, OK. This is messing with me. There we go. OK, so this is the line that we're going to draw. <laughs> and this is the, basically the length. Because I move the axis to the center of the screen, then suddenly the x coordinates go from 0 to 1 and from 0, sorry, from 0 to probably 0 0.5 and from 0 to minus 0 0.5. So um, what I can do now is to use the, the, the magic of the smooth step again to the final line. And let's do that. Cool. So now we have a line, but to be able to keep the line, I want the inverse of this because now we have white. So what that means, like, if I do a mask, I'm going to get the background and I'm going to remove the part in the middle. So we want the contrary of this. And so now we have that. This is great. But we also want just half of it, probably, so we can attach it to the, to the, to the flower. So we can kill the upper part of it. Um, this is probably going to be 0, 0.0. And on the vertical axis. Uh, oops, sorry. Nope. Yeah, here we go. So now, if we go back to the painter's algorithm here, and we just uh, add, um, let's actually paint it before the flower. And we just do, what color should we do? Red. Let's make it green. Um, OK, so we have this thing, this root. But this is still really artificial. So let's add some deformation to this, to this root. So we, maybe like, we can add some sign of um, the vertical coordinate. Now suddenly, this thing starts looking a little bit better, but not really. So maybe by five, but the reformation now is too big, so let's make it a little smaller. Uh, maybe bigger. OK, here we go. That's it. Um, so, so now you have a flower moving and uh, this thing uh, uh, attaching it to the, to the ground. But uh, really, we don't have a ground. So let's just quickly draw a ground. So, oops, I'm just going to call it G. <laughs> um, so for the, for the ground, I'm just going to do some step to go uh, a little faster. Uh, and I'm going to add it to the final color here. It's green. 
and blue and G maybe. Yeah, OK, good. Uh, but this is, uh, I don't know. I'm always adding a sine wave everywhere. So I'm going to add another one here. It's cool. Oops, that's too big. Um, so maybe we should make it smaller, maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah. And we should increase the frequency a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So, um, so you get the idea. Uh, basically, uh, defining uh, boundaries between between things using the, the the smooth step functionality, and then basically at the end you grab that that magic number that tells you if you are in or out of a, of an object, and then you apply a color depending on that, and you basically keep adding colors on top of it, basically manually doing some sort of uh, painter's algorithm. So, this is this is um, this is one thing. But there's more stuff, right? Like uh, right now, we only looked at uh, at uh, color and and color. Um, like we we use a vector expression, and this is like because it comes already from GLSL, and it's uh, really simple to use. But there's other uh, things you can do. There's uh, other spaces you can use if you want to interpolate between between two colors. Like if you want to visualize, for example, RGB in a in a um, interesting way, you probably like. I don't know if you guys have tried it, but you know you can draw red on one axis and green on one axis, and then what do you do with the blue? You know you need some sort of volume or something. So there is other spaces that you can use for for drawing, and this is this is one of them. Uh, you can use, for example, a space like like this one where um, I just put together a, a simple thing that should remind you. If I just uh, twist it a little bit, it should remind you the color palette or similar to the color palette that you would use in, in, in Photoshop uh, or any other software, pretty much. And this is because, this is because um, you can see the whole spectrum of color. And the only thing I did is right there, like those uh, uh, lines of code. Sorry, it's too small. Uh, these lines of code here basically calculate the polar coordinates, and then I just basically get uh, the color that it, that it that belongs to that position. And that's something that you cannot do with RGB, and it's, uh, uh, this is a, a very easy way to show all colors, and also let you, as a programmer as well, it lets you interpolate between different colors and in a more interesting way than RGB. Um, yep. And I wanted to cover as well uh, some other uh, tricks. Like for example, if you try to generate uh, random numbers uh, from from a shader, uh, because you know what I just created is very like you know just like it's one flower and it appears in this position. But maybe like every time you want to open that shader, you want it to look different, right? So maybe you can have um, some random number that allows you to to modify your scene. And uh, if you try to do it on a shader. This is actually uh, an interesting uh, challenge, and there's a lot of literature that you can go and stuff. So uh, this is just like a really brief introduction. Um, but uh, one of the tricks that that has been used uh, um, is to um, to just use the sine function again. Uh, but in this case, you only keep uh, keep the the fractional part of the of the of the, um, uh, of the sine, and it has a shape like this. It uh, um, and this doesn't look like a random number at all, but as soon as you start uh, increasing the frequency of this sign, it starts getting more interesting because suddenly, sorry for the rendering, it's kind of broken, but, uh, but suddenly it's really hard to predict when you ask, like, hey, I have, uh, I'm rendering position you know, uh, UV34, what, or, or I'm, yeah, UV34, and like, it's really hard to predict what, what's the outcome of the, of the random number. And then if you increase it more, it gets, Ah. If you increase it more, it gets harder and harder and harder. And you can see some of the problems of using signs because of the maximums and the minimums, but, but let's forget about it now. <laughs> um, then there is, you can also do the same idea, but in 2D. You can just, just say, hey, um, grab a, um, I'll pass you a UV, a UV coordinate. I'm going to project it. I'm going to do a dot product on it, and I'm going to make it. Basically, you're trying to get one number that you can use on your previous algorithm. So that's the same idea, but the results are pretty, are pretty good. It's just like it looks like random numbers, which is, which is great. 
Um, but, but the reality, oh, sorry, and then you can also just use a texture if you don't want to do all the math. <laughs> but that's a little bit less interesting, I guess. Uh, but, but really, that nature is never um, that chaotic. It has a little bit more, consist more coherency. And so, uh, th and then obviously this is where a lot of the research has been focusing on, on many, many years, which is uh, how, how you can efficiently create noise that looks good and that is contiguous, continuous and derivatives and so forth. And you know, there's plenty of algorithms that you can go and, and, and check. Just include like fractals and Perlin and value noises and gradient noises and simplex noises and noises like you know it's a, f a whole field of research so uh, you know feel free to dig. Um, but also you can use media to create to do these sort of uh, um, uh, visuals and this is kind of cool because that means like you don't, you don't you don't depend purely on code you can also use textures you can use sound you can use video and that's kind of what I want to show now. Uh, so uh, I had a texture here prepared, like, so I can just uh, grab uh, the texture here to show how simple it is and say that. Let's see. I'm going to recalculate the UVs because I destroyed them, moving them to other spaces. So. But basically, these are the UVs that should have at the beginning of the, of the execution. But, but yeah, so you can use this texture, and you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with this texture. Um, you can use the polar coordinates to do weird, weird projections like, um, like that. And then suddenly, this is sort of a tunnel, right? Like if, you, if I like, do some shading on it, like suddenly, it does look like a tunnel, I hope. And, and you can animate it, too. Like, but this is all coming from a simple 2D texture. Um, and yeah, this is cool. But, but also, you can um, like use um, my voice, for example. So I can just call it React. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain now what I'm doing. But you can see I, uh, I'm using iChannel0, which is basically this thing that keeps moving all the time. This is my voice, and it's being, uh, well, this is the FFT of my voice, but, but I'm going to use that FFT to drive, uh, to drive that behavior. So, uh, have to bear with me. This is going to work. This is going to work. So, so now uh, this React variable has something uh, some value that uh, that basically depends on my voice. So, for example, if you go back to the previous uh, scene and I just multiply this by my by the reaction, suddenly this should start reacting with my voice. Maybe hello, hey, hello. Okay, here we go. So it is reacting. Proofed. It works. Um, so, but you can do more stuff, and you already seen the tunnels. But and just to start wrapping up, I'm going to do two more tricks. But you can uh, also, if you, look, if you like more, you know, if you grow up in the 80s, maybe, uh, maybe you're more into, uh, into this. And I'll just explain now what am I doing. But. So you can do something like this or, or like this. And this is like basically one line of code. And I think it's kind of cool that you can just do that with one line of code. But what but, but this line of code does is like it grabs the, the UV space and it says, hey, instead of going from 0 to 1, now why don't you go from 0 to 50? And then while you're going from 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 and 2 to 3, what you do is you say you have the same value for that period of time. So that's why you get that like color repetition uh, and this kind of like uh, retro looking thing. Um, and you can also uh, um, do domain repetitions and things like that if you want to create 50 copies of this or whatever. It's up, it's up to you. It basically, like I did all this with like uh, 731 characters, or whatever that means. But it's basically 30 lines of code or 40, so it's really great. Um, and there's a lot of stuff uh, that um, that uh, can be done. Like I thought this was a really um, awesome example of uh, um, the technology. But but basically, this is drawing lines, and then it's 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 using diffusion to to expand the color. So it's 
it's painting uh, after using just the color of the, of the curves. And you, know, you can imagine this could be something that you could use for compression or, for, or just as, as an artistic, um, uh, as an artistic uh, uh, visual. Um, and you can do all sorts of things. Like you can also create a, a Candy Crush in the same, uh, with the same ideas, like because it's all like 2D and so it's simple. And so, but you can see those spheres, those little circles, are made in the same way. And like you know, everything is is just you have to spend enough time and enough hours. I don't know how many hours he spent, but this looks like a lot of time. But it's really impressive. Um, and of course, like this is something I put together recently. But this is you can also like just create some sort of uh, you know, if you have enough time, which I had at the time. Uh, <laughs> You can create a word processor that purely runs on the GPU, and the letters are being rendered in the same way, calculating the distance manually to uh, to the A, and calculating the distance to the B, and calculating the distance to the C, and then when you press a button, it will print whatever it needs to be print. So, uh, yeah, and and I figured, you know, this is an introduction to uh, the 2D drawing, but of course, I was going to show as well, like, you can also do 3D drawing and in, in the same characteristics, just using code. And this is done by, by Inigo, who's the other person who made the, the website. And, you know, he's, uh, um, he has a lot of literature published uh, about uh, how to draw in 3D, but, but this is the same idea. It's just like, instead, instead of having 2D functions, you have 3D functions. And instead of using... Uh, Actually, not instead. You still use the smooth steps, and you still use steps, and use the same ideas. But in this case, it's all in in, in 3D. Um, so, so yeah, it is it is also possible in the same way to just drive visuals purely with code in 3D as well as in 2D. And and yes, I have two minutes, so I wanted to especially thanks uh, to um, FMX to bring me here. This is awesome conference. Uh, to Tomas for inviting me, uh, to Inigo for his help on on all this and on all the learnings that I've done over the years. And thank you. <laughs> I don't know if we have time for questions or. Cool. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you.